Hello and welcome to the first part of the C++ tutorial. My name is Brian. And uh, my name is Kevin. Welcome. The first step in making a C++ program is to have a text editor and a compiler. Right. And uh, actually right now we are going to go online and we're going to get a open source, what's called an IDE, an integrated development environment, which actually combines the two into one beautiful little application. And the best part is it's free. Absolutely. So we're not using Visual Studio in these tutorials. We're going to be using Dev C++ released by uh, a beautiful company called Bloodshed. And uh, we're actually going to go check out their website right now. So let's uh, open up our Firefox web browser here. So it just goes to show that just with a plain copy of Windows and an internet connection, you can be up and running and programming like, like there's no tomorrow. Absolutely. And the website we're going to visit is www.bloodshed.net. And at this current date, this is what their homepage looks like. So we're going to go over here to the download selection, and once we're here, we're going to select this program, Dev C++. Once the screen is fully loaded, we can scroll down to the bottom where there is an option here that says Downloads and Go to Download Page. We'll select that, and that's going to take us to this page. Now on this page, it's going to give us some information about the program, the requirements, the licensing, and of course they're asking for donations since they do all this work for free. If you do have a couple of spare dollars, throw them their way. I unfortunately do not, so I'm just going <laughs> to leech off of them. This uh, version, we're going to download the, the latest version they have available. At the time of this recording, 5.0 beta 9.2 is the most recent one, and I'm going to select download from SourceForge. Let's scroll down here. I'm going to find the closest server to me because that should make it the fastest. I'm over here on the east coast of Maryland, so I'm going to try Georgia. That looks good. Of course, any of these buttons should work just fine. And it's going to automatically allow me to download it here in just one second. All right, I'm going to save this to disk. And now it's downloading. Now we have successfully downloaded the program to our desktop, so let's close our web browser. And the executable file is this one right here, so let's just go ahead and double click on it and open it. Um, and now it's just giving, it's saying that if you, know, if you have any previous versions, uninstall it. I'm going to assume that you do not, so we'll select OK. Although if you do and you hit that OK by accident, there is an option in the installation to uninstall all previous versions cool. during the install. So Sounds good. Just as a heads up. Alright, so I speak English. Alright, so this is giving us the, uh, the GPL license. We'll just select Agree. And uh, full install looks good. That's going to throw everything that we need on here. And the last one in this list here is both previous versions. Yeah, so if you do have a previous version installed, you can select this, but we don't, so I'm going to unselect that. C, Dev C, looks good to me. Look good to you? Oh, yeah. All right, we'll install that, and there she goes. And then after we get this installed, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at the graphical interface and then continue afterwards with the structure of a basic C++ program. Now, the layout of uh, Dev C++ is a pretty standard layout mm -hmm. compared to most yeah. IDEs. Uh, Visual Studio, if you, if you do get a chance to use it, you'll see it's quite a bit similar to Dev C++. It's a good idea uh, if you're using an unsecure Windows system. Do you want to, you know, let everyone use this? Yes, this means anyone that's logged in on the computer can use it, so there's no special privileges. So just select yes, it makes things a lot easier. And now that it's done, it gives us an option to, uh, to run the program. So when I select finish, it will automatically open the program. So here she comes. All right, now it's going to give us this little thing here, report bugs, okay, because it is a beta release. We'll select OK. It's asking us to select the theme. I always like to select the Use XP theme because it looks kind of nice and sharp and pretty. Mm -hmm. And then select Next. And then this selection right here, I'm going to go ahead and select No. Click Next. OK, it's been c configured successfully. OK. There she comes. And I'm kind of a, you know, I don't like these tip of the day things, so uh -huh. I always do not display, close. Here it is. A very simple layout. Uh, it almost resembles, and I do kind of use that term loosely, almost resembles the layout of Visual Studio because it doesn't quite, but it kind of sort of does. Um, and also a lot of IDEs for Linux, also a lot of other ones for Windows kind of use this kind of this, this format. Like KDevelop also uses this basic layout. Right, KDevelop and Judo is also for Linux. Uh, another really great thing about using Dev C++ as opposed to using Visual Studio is if you do any Linux programming, any code that you write in here, at, at least any code that is not operating system specific, will switch over into to the Linux operating system because it's using the same compiler that Linux uses, and that's the GCC compiler. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could actually import these files in Linux as long as it's not operating system specific. We're going to be coming back with the second video where we're going to take a look at the structure of a basic C++ program.